Hi, my name is Karen Scassell, and today I'm going to teach you how to do flat panels on the Addy Express. Flat panels meaning knitting back and forth, or as the Addy Express calls them, plain. On the side of your Addy Express, there's a little red button, and there's a little switch, or actually I should say a little red switch. You can have either circular knitting, or you can have plain knitting. Circular knitting is when you continuously turn your handle, in a clockwise direction. And if you continuously turn it in a clockwise direction, you're always knitting in the round and you're going to end up with a two. If you want to end up with a flat panel, then what you want to do is you want to reverse your work. So you take your red switch, you bring it up to plain knitting, but you want to make sure you do so when there's white needles in this carriage area. You don't want to do it when you have black needles in that area because the black needles are where the carriage actually stops. Um, so we're going to go back here. And when it stops, we're going to go clockwise and we're going to take our yarn, put it around the first needle, put it behind the next one and in front and behind and in front. And you're just going to alternate going in front and behind the needle all the way around the bed. Make sure you don't go too fast. You don't want to miss any. You want to make sure that the very last white needle, that it actually catches the yarn. And once it does, your machine's going to come to an end. It's going to stop you. And what you want to do, oops, you can hear the stop right there. You want to put your yarn in the yarn carriage, and then you want to continue in the other direction. And I'm holding this pretty tight so that I get a nice smooth edge. Now, that very last needle, the black needle, actually pull the stitch in, as you can see right here. The only thing is, is it's not actually going to knit it the next round. It's actually going to release it, and then you're always going to have a little tab hanging there, and I'll show you what it looks like. When you come this direction, go until the machine stops, and then, oops, I didn't go all the way, there we go. Then pull your yarn taunt, and then you can see it's nice and taunt there. Then continue going, and it will knit that first stitch. When you get to this end, I'm going to wait till it comes to the end, and you're going to do the same thing. And you notice, this time, it dropped that stitch, and you have this little tag right here. You're always going to have that tag. You can hide it when you're done with your piece of work or whatever, but there's just really no way to do it without that tag. So now I can just continue knitting back and forth. And each time I come to an end, the key to having nice edges is to pull the yarn Huh, when you come back. So I'm going to get this end. When I get to the end, I'm going to pull it top and I'm going to get nice edges. So I go back and forth for as many rows as I would like. You can go as fast as you want as long as when you get to those ends, you slow down, watch what you're doing, and pull that yarn nice and tight. And then you will get, as you can see, you get some pretty nice edges there. So when you have finished your flat piece and you want to bind off, you want to make sure that you've knit an even number of rows. Okay, and then when you come back to that end, you want to open your carriage, take the yarn out, Close the carriage again because you are going to be turning the bed. Cut yourself off a piece, um, well, probably about a yard long is, is more than plenty. Now, as we, we want to actually capture these stitches on this needle as we release them, when we turn the handle and we have no yarn in there, um, you actually, actually you want to put this back to circular knitting so you can turn in this direction. Um, this needle, oops, this stitch here, is going to come off as I turn. If you can see, the needle came through and it's not being held in anymore because there's no yarn in the yarn carriage. I'm going to pull my yarn through that stitch and as I turn this, the next stitch, I can pull it and I can pull the yarn through the stitch. And I can continue to do this. Now, as I turn, I can probably do a couple of stitches at once. I just want to make sure that when I pull my yarn through, that I'm not pulling these off the bed because that is easily done. 
So once more I can turn my handle in the clockwise position. Now, another way to bind off would be to use a scrap yarn and actually knit like four rows. And then you can actually release your piece from the bed um, simply by running the, uh, the needles through a few times without yarn in them. And we'll show you how to do that on our next piece. But this way, we're picking up all our stitches and just continuously turn, loop them onto my needle. And if you're a real handy person, you can actually use a circular needle and put them on too. But takes a little bit of practice, so I'd recommend in the beginning that you always use your little red plastic needle. There we go. So, now I have my piece off, and we can see what we're looking at. You can see how the bind off merely pulls the yarn right through those stitches. So it's not as nice as a bind off as if you're hand knitting. So if you want to have a really nice hand knitting bind off so it looks like you hand knit the piece, then you're going to want to do the second bind off that I'll show you in a minute. Um, but here you can see on your ends, you have very, very nice ends. And your work's a little curled at the moment, but nothing that a little blocking can't take out. And then if you just pull it like this, because the stitches have been stretched in the width, you can see that you get a really nice fabric. And once more, pulling it taut gives you those nice ends.